Hey everyone, I'm Florian, greetings from Vienna and welcome to another video on Evoluta Tools Pro. In the next minutes we will take a look at simulating the draping of fabrics over complex shapes. This simulation, this application is uh, specifically targeting the draping behavior of woven fabrics like carbon, glass or aramid for the composites industry, like the ones shown on the screen. To simulate such a fabric, we will first create a mesh that has similar or identical connectivity um, to the weave that we are interested in. So we're simply starting with a big blank mesh. And we will use subdivision rules in order to get the required connectivity and density. And we'll use Catmull Clark, which is uh, well suited for a plain weave um, but for example we can do diagonalize you know just one step of subdivision and we get a B diagonal pattern uh, or we can try other patterns I will use a plain weave um, instead this time and once you get the required connectivity or the desired connectivity and density it's important to note the cell size, it's basically 40 millimeters, because we will use this as a uh, constraint. I'll add this here, and we will force all the edge lengths in this mesh to be as close to 40 millimeters as possible. Basically, we're avoiding stretch and compression. We're trying to force, we're trying to uh, make this mesh conform to our mold but without um, stretch and compression if possible. Alright, um, next thing to do is to flag the actual edges that I will want to keep constant. And at this point we're ready to start the draping. And the draping itself is controlled by a few functions. Uh, we have surface closeness here. This is basically forcing um, the mesh or the fabric to uh, snap onto our uh, mold. I have some fairness curvature added and this is just keeping the the seams of the mesh, basically the, the fibers, as smooth as possible. And I have ideal edge length um, ramped up to a 2. So this, th this parameter, ideal edge length, this function is trying to keep basically the length of these uh, fibers uh, as close to 40 millimeters as possible, like the the small edge lengths. Um, all right, and you can ramp this up and down in order to get a, um, a suitable result. So it's not an automatic process. We have to, you have to analyze, you have to optimize, analyze, and modify. All right, we're ready to start the optimization now. Just a few steps, and the mesh is basically snapping onto our mold. Uh, there's a bit of an area here which is not covered. Our mesh is a bit on the short side, so I'll, I'll just I'll just drag some vertices and anchor them here. All right, and if you, it's like it's like dragging the fibers um, with your own hands, and then you can optimize again, and you can see the entire um, mesh move around according to that new um, positional constraint. I can also release it uh, as easy as um, deselecting it if I want to. Okay, so that was quite a few steps of optimization. Let's look at our mesh or our fabric. Now obviously on such a large and complex uh, shape you will not use a single, uh, a single ply. Uh, you will use several patches. Uh, but this is just for demonstration purposes. It's quite an extreme example to try to conform this mesh over this complex shape. Now what we can see is because of the cell size uh, we don't have enough information in this mesh to actually follow the geometry um, closely. So what we will do now I'll actually uh, subdivide again this mesh with another special subdivision which is called edge split. This is creating a new mesh. So this new mesh 
as a new vertex in between each of the original vertices. So there is a bit more information in this mesh right now so it can conform uh, a bit better to the actual geometry of the mold. And we can actually carry on the subdivision further if we want, for example. We can add um, two or three or four more vertices in between these original vertices. But for the moment it's, it's fine, it's dense enough for display purposes. Um, once we have a new mesh we have to reflag again the edges. Alright, this is done. Detecting my corners. I can try to optimize again and see what happens and it will not be good. You see it's trying to get bigger actually because I did subdivision so I basically I split this 40 millimeters in two I also have to adjust it to my ideal edge length. Alright so now we can optimize again and we can see that the um, the fabric is conforming a little bit better to the shape of the mold. And at this point we can look at some of the analysis tools because we're really interested in how far this mesh is from our reference surface and what's the actual status of the of the fiber length. Alright, so let's look at the analysis a little bit. So what we have here is closeness. I'll just give it the mean max range. And these are Rhino real units. And again, you will not get too close to your um, to your mold if the resolution of the mesh that you're optimizing is not dense enough. But this is again just for demonstration purposes. Uh, another important thing is the edge lengths. So I have 21 to 19 for uh, display scale. So we're not doing too bad. We can see some of the fibers here are really trying to stretch uh, at the point where I where I anchored, sorry about that, where I anchored that vertex. Okay, um, another analysis mode that we're actually pretty interested in is the angles between the fibers. Because as we can see here, the angles here are quite acute and this would translate in a pretty thick uh, layup in that area. So you might want to avoid those of course. And we can definitely analyze that visually. Here it is. Uh, we have quite a few red spots so there are areas where the, the layup would get quite thick because of the angles of the fibers they're just uh, bundling together so it's normally something to avoid so uh, you can cut your your mesh up you can cut your uh, fabric up and use several patches in order to get a nice coverage uh, without stretch and compression uh, but still getting good nice uh, angles between the the fiber directions all right Again, for such a big uh, and complex part, you would not use a single uh, flat ply. You would use patches, um, but this is just for demonstration purposes. And other things we can do is we can try to uh, cut the mesh up. So we can see how the, the fibers move if we introduce a cut in the fabric. So I just introduced a cut here and I'm pretty curious to see how the fibers will start to move around. So it's normal that you will start to see some overlapping in that area. And of course um, in the depression of the mold in the middle, the fibers will try to get away from each other. It's There's a lot of surface area to cover and the fibers are getting away from each other. Alright, so this is an interesting way to to try to simulate the draping of these fabrics over a complex shape. Um, at some point you can just cut your mesh. Oh sorry. You can cut the the 
unused part of this fabric. I'm not going to do it really close. And just so we can get the contour um, of the actual fabric that we have to cut out. And we have the contour right here. Of course it's just the jagged edges from, um, from the cells of the mesh. I just deleted faces there. So again, this is, this is definitely not a perfect draping. It's just, this is not what you would want for in your mold we have quite a lot of change of directions of the fibers but this is just for demonstration purposes um, so you can see how the the draping works so there are a few essential things to to do so first you have to force them um, you have to force the edges in this mesh uh, to be as close as possible to the cell size that you define so you use the ideal edge length parameter and then its uh, surface closeness is just pulling the mesh onto your mold. You use a bit of fairness curvature in order to get nice smooth directions of these fibers. And that's about it. Then it's up to you to, to figure out where you have to put some cutouts in the fabric, uh, split it and use smaller patches and things like that. Um, depending of course on um, how the the fabric itself behaves in terms of stretch and compression. So you have analysis tools at hand. All right, I hope this application was uh, interesting and we look forward to your feedback. Thanks for watching.